Okay, so. You ready? Uh, I think I'm ready. So guys, we're back for another video. And we did Harrison's top 10 about Harrison. a month ago, you know, and that was fun. And here comes round two. So I think in a month you'll see Nick's for right now, you're gonna get mine. So this is Thomas's top 10, oh my God. But first of all, you know, like, you know, like it's the same rules as before, one game per franchise, but the franchise carries weight and you get some honorable mentions. So I guess we'll kick off with those and these guys are gonna let me know how wonderful my tastes Let's are. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so the first honorable mention, I mean like just making a top 10 to begin with, it's really hard. I'd much rather, rather make it like a top 50. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, so the Soulsborne games, I guess if I had to pick one, it would be the original Dark Souls. That was like, I mean, arguably my favorite PS3 game. Um, a complete surprise out of nowhere that like, you know, kind of revived into, you know, the live stream of gamers, this whole, you know, like kind of a Nintendo hard style game in a 3D setting with pretty deep RPG elements that kind of like, you know, evenly balance Eastern and Western RPGs pretty well. So like, I, you know, but uh, man, like I loved Dark Souls. I loved how that world just like became so connected and just like the variety of locations and the verticality of it and just how, I feel like you just went everywhere. So I guess we'll just briefly go through this, but Dark Souls is good. Oh, yeah, yeah. He hasn't played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, played, <laughs> I, played, I, played, I played three. I played three, 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 yeah, three yeah. and the remaster's coming out this week, so uh, I'm still waiting on the Switch version because yeah. I need to play it portably. Um, 2022, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, go. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited to play it. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what else is there to say? I mean, the Soul series is great, Bloodborne's great. It, it definitely revitalized the Nintendo hard genre, mm -hmm. gave birth to some delightful memes. Praise the uh, sun. Wow. Um, yeah, one of the, I think, the best you know, incarnations of sort of the Metroidvania style of games. Sure. One expansive yeah. map. And, and how could I forget the bosses? Like boss the boss fights, amazing. like in like in Dark Souls, and just like the dungeon crawling like elements of it, and just how brutal it was. A really great example of like the show don't tell style of, of game design. And oh, I think, yeah. you know, just for Souls One, like some of the best level design in any game mm -hmm. in recent memory. For sure. All right, so Souls, love you, but you didn't make the list. Uh, so another honorable mention is Shadow of the Colossus and really just like his games in general. Like I love Last Guardian, I love Eco, uh, but like, man, uh, Shadow of the Colossus was another one of those games. Like came out very late in the PS2. It like kind of had this Zelda kind of, you know, aesthetic to it and kind of like, you know, with this like open world design, but like the world is just dead and you just ride around and you like battle these absurd colossi and like you just look at them at first and you're like, okay, what do I do? And and like just like the whole like puzzling elements around the boss fights, like that game is just boss fight battle royale in a beautiful world. So I just like how you mainly just go and fight a big boss and there's no, I mean there's a puzzle yeah. and you have to figure things out, but for the most part that's like all you're doing and for sure great. I didn't play the, the series a whole lot so I can't really chime in very yeah. much but it's interesting to me just sort of as an observation the, the Soul series and the Eco Shadows of the Colossus series do have a few things in common you know they're very sparsely populated game worlds they don't give you a lot of plot elements mm -hmm. spoon fed um, the story and the plot are all kind of in the details mm -hmm. there for you to pluck out so it's, it's interesting that you you know you like both those series Ugh. So, so good, but you didn't make it. All right, so next is The Last of Us, which is, like, was a pinnacle for narrative, like, mastering that Uncharted gameplay system, melding it into this, like, survival horror-esque, like, genre blender. Like, everything was just presented about it. I mean, like, f arguably the best-looking PS3 game, um, like, man, there are just, like, so many great things about that game. And, like, just for how rare it is and how hard it is for a studio to make a really polished and complete narrative and make it cutting edge. Like, I think Last of Us really 
like won it. And like I remember forcing it down. You, I remember well, no, you okay. watching me play. I, and you're yeah, like, I, was, oh. I was about to say, the the, like the first time I ever saw it was watching you and you were throwing bricks to distract clickers and. I was like, oh my god, I, this, I, I'm, I'm going to hate this game. It's so stressful. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. Like, yeah. I, just, I, I hate that kind of stressful stuff yeah. when I'm playing because I just like to have fun. But then like, I got in and I started playing it and I, like, I got to the same part where you were and I was just like, this is fun. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. It, it, like, I don't know, it handled things in a really, uh, really well because I, like, I typically don't like those types of games, but I, I loved it. And I thought that the art direction, I thought the creatures were awesome, and I know that I was drawing them in my free time because I was just like, these are really different and cool. So yeah, I mean, I think it has one of the best game openings of really any one of the, I think the best game opening in any game I've played in no. terms of like survival horror. It sucks like, you in. It immediately time. sets the tone. Yeah, yeah. It it just leaves your mouth agape wanting more like yeah you know, yeah like where the hell does this go from here it's and like honestly for that team to get an emotional response like 15 minutes into the game yeah it's pretty thing. yeah it's like that's pretty awesome and like and like right after that moment it shows like the you know the title and you're like damn this is gonna be amazing right. and it was so and it doesn't really let up until it finishes right yeah all right so another one this feels criminal but uh, Smash Brothers, God love ya. Uh, played probably more hours in Smash than the three games I mentioned combined before. So uh, I'd love to know our t- like just my collective time playing Smash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, collective yeah. Time. It's probably Wars really, no, it's, it's probably really it's different. It's there. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hundreds, if not like, like a there. thousand. I mean, like, I, I mean, yeah. you played Melee a lot back in the day. No, I know. Like I like, like seriously. I played a lot of sixty four when I was a kid. Uh, I, yeah, I played. I played like all, like the majority of them up until uh, the Wii version. That's when I kind of fell off a little bit, but that's just because I was in college and I didn't have as much time, and I didn't have you all because I was living in Savannah, Georgia, so, like, no one I really knew played like we did, uh-huh. so when yeah. I would play people, they were like, you're just too good, it's like, sorry. sorry, yeah, she's just Get too better, good. <laughs> but, I mean, like, like, seriously, like, I feel like that all of us have played so much Smash, we're at this level, and, like, it's just, like, a intense battle, and, like, I mean, it's, it, we probably could not put or what we say on the internet. So, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Smash. Like, my favorite fighting game of all time. So but, close. But you didn't make, the, make list. the list. Yeah, you know, it's like, you, you'll find out through the top ten what my tastes are. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so and my final honorable mention is Vice City. And oh. just generally the Grand Theft Auto franchise itself. Just because, again, like one another time sink for me. Like I, I played, I've played all of them. I've beaten all of them, and like I've, like you know, like I, like sometimes I'm like, eh, stories aren't that good, and like you know, and I think they could be better, um, but um, like I, th- every time I like beat them and have so much fun, and like the, like just the king of the sandbox genre. So many studios are emulating them, so. Uh, like, I mean, what can you say? Vice City, I, I think, is your favorite, it is, too. It is, yeah, it was yeah. the first one I played, too. I don't know if it was your yeah, first. Yeah, well, Theft I actually Auto. played the first, the original Grand Theft Auto on PlayStation. Then I got Grand Theft Auto 2 on PC. Hmm. And then GTA 3 came out, and Clay, my brother, went out and bought it. And, like, and he showed it to me, and I was like, let me have the controller. That was, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, the, first, yeah, that was yeah. the first one I played, and I, yeah. I love that, but, uh-huh. like... Vice City was amazing. That game was so much It's fun. evolved so much since then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they started that, Rockstar started that genre, and yeah. they're still the best. I mean, yeah. Like, they're raking uh, it But yeah, Vice, Vice City, I think, is my favorite, too. It's, it's yeah. like the least overburdened with complicated systems. It's straightforward. It's just pure, kind of refined GTA. I, yeah. Like, I got to give a shout out to San Andreas and GTA V. Like, those, like, I feel like those would be my top three. No love for four. Games. I do like four a lot, but I think I thought five was significantly better in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, didn't, like the, I, I didn't like the yeah, maps in four. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I've always, it was very. Limited. I really liked going yeah. fast, and I always felt like I couldn't just go fast. Yeah. It felt very claustrophobic. Yeah, yeah, I felt like some of the For they GTA, could have yeah. done things a little bit better in mm-hmm. the road mapping. I don't know. It may have been a little. You know, they're probably feeling out the early PS3 hardware back then. It's also really new. And then five <laughs> was a feat of like, oh yeah, yeah like ingenuity. So. Uh, all right, that's it. So now we're going to 
They can't look. Uh, to my number 10, which would be the Mario series, but particularly Mario 3. Uh, the main reason I put it on the top 10 is because, like, it's the game that introduced me to consoles and playing video games at home and just, like, invented my, you know, my that being a main source of entertain, entertainment for me growing up. So, uh, still love the franchise. I think the franchise, like, has always been strong, which is ridiculous. I mean, you know, of course they have the novelty of Mario being the most recognizable video game character, but... I still think that they change up the formula enough every time to like really get you into it. Like I love the Galaxy series. I gotta give a shout out to Mario World. Like three is my favorite, but Mario World's like right behind it. Um, and I also like you know like Mario sixty four. Yeah, there's a lot of really good ones. They're so, all really and like like yeah, and Odyssey was fantastic. So like, I mean Nintendo, you know, you can see their care with that franchise. So yeah. What can Mario, you say? Well, yeah, series that has I know before. exactly. Like, it, like I just had to put it on there. Anyway, so now we move on to number nine, and that is Kingdom Hearts two, and the Kingdom Hearts franchise in general. Uh, now, like you know, I've been thinking like, oh, am I just like excited for Kingdom Hearts now because the third one's about to come out? No, Kingdom Hearts two is definitely one of my favorite games ever made. Because, again, boss fights, like, I think Kingdom Hearts 2 boss battles are some of the most, like, visionary, visually detailed things ever in the history of gaming. And, like, just the combat in that game is just so much fun. And, like, especially towards the end, with all the abilities that are unlocked, it, like, really makes Kingdom Hearts 1 seem like nothing. Like, you're Super Saiyan flying around doing everything. So, uh, yeah, and, like, I just love the characters. Like, I love Sora. Like, Tetsuya Nomura, you know, it was his first project uh, after working heavily on the Final Fantasy series. And he hit a home run, and he created his own fan base out of this. So, uh, I know the story can be a little, like, off-kilter and bizarre. I think there's a little charm to it, and it challenges its audience to, like, you know, figure out what's going on. But with that said, if you were to ask me to explain the plot of Kingdom Hearts 2, which I've played probably four or five times, I could barely. So, yeah, yeah, um, and like, and it, it probably has my favorite final boss of all time. Just how like there's like these five insane fights in a row, and uh, I really I love Kingdom Hearts too. Get to it, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, still, I mean, I'm still working my way. Through. I mean, like Kingdom Hearts one, like like brought me to the franchise. It's I mean, I love that game too. Um, I like Birth by Sleep, but like Kingdom Hearts 2 for me, like especially after revisiting the series a lot, uh, despite it not having as good of level design as Kingdom Hearts 1, I still feel like just like the combat was very special. So I thought the, yeah. like, the whole franchise like was pretty, I mean, like I said in my video, I, it, it made it into my top 10 and I know that when you were telling me to play it, and I was like, I won't play a Disney game. And then when I actually played it, I was like, wow, this is not at all what I thought it was going to be. It still has, like, cutesy moments, but it's more, definitely more adult. And I just like the, like, again, when Square takes something in the very beginning and then ramps it up to the end, and it's like, how did I go from being on a beach to now fighting space aliens? You know, it's like, it's like crazy. So, I don't know. I just, it's, it, it, it totally took me off guard, and I, I love it. And, I, yeah. I like what, how they handle a lot of the characters and things like that from some of my favorite uh, Disney But how movies, they, they mix Disney and, like, and Square. Yeah. Like, they did it really well, and shockingly so. So uh, we're all excited for the third one coming out soon. All right, so number eight. I got I to gotta go with Half-Life 2 and just mm. the Half-Life games in general and just being my favorite first-person shooter, and I still feel like I have never played a first-person shooter game as good as Half-Life 2. Um, granted, it's not really my genre much anymore because, like, frankly, I feel that either they're all Battle Royale first-person shooters shooter. now, or military shooter, you know, you got Battlefield, Call of Duty, uh, like, Overwatch, which actually seems kind of fun, but, but like, there's no really, like, linear narrative-driven first-person shooter in a game. Uh, in a while, so, but yeah, Half-Life 2, um, 
I mean, just like the journey of it and the, t and the tech, I remember watching videos for the physics for that game mm -hmm. and it being like a, a next level stuff. It's so I common got, now. I got that yeah. demo. I had yeah. that because yeah, you were in like a big white room and you could yeah. shoot some wood and it would make barrels fall and like the physics at that time, yeah. what they were doing in that game was amazing. That gravity gun that you get, yeah, and gravity like throw gun things rocked. around. That and all the vehicles amazing. and like how like I love like how it's bookended. You walk out and you see the giant tower in front of you and that's like where the, you ascend at the end. And you go on this huge journey, like, via boat and car, and, like, it just feels like, and you're being hunted the whole time. Like, just, like, how that game is presented and polished is absolutely insane, and I love it so much. Like, uh, I've, I've played Game Wars. I mean, about, I've played Half-Life 2 so many times. What about Raven, huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Like, talk about, like, shifting the mood dramatically to, like, some of the scariest shit in games ever. Like, like, like... It's a great level. They did, like, yeah, that was masterfully done. Uh, and just the scale of it for its time was unparalleled. And, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like you can't really beat it. And, like, when I was also a kid, like, I've played so much Counter-Strike. Like, and that's that was, you know, built in the engine and was one of the spinoff games. Uh, I wanted a follow-up game so bad after I beat that game. After I beat two, I was just like, come on, give me the next one. Yeah, and it totally yes. ended on a cliffhanger. Yeah, I was waiting for nice. it. And it just, nice. yeah. Um, Nothing's happened, right? Yeah, I'm not it's so something. good that Valve completely stopped making games. That's the, that's my last point. Like, you like, know the Portal series? And yeah, the Portal's Half fantastic. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, it is the same universe, but yeah. I still can only say Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 1. And I love Half-Life 1, by the way. Fan amazing, too. There were two... Episodes after Then they had episode two. one and two. Episode one was kind of short, but episode two was like, could have been its own Half Life game. Yeah. It was so fun. Um, but incomplete but yeah. in some ways from a plot perspective. Yeah, well, they left it on a huge cliffhanger. I don't know right. if you really remember. Well, it was, it was like 10 years ago. No, yeah, this fun. came out in like 2006, I want to say, 2007. Yeah. I remember they came out the orange box. Like, that was like it for Half Life. And, and like, Gabe Newell wanders around, like, milking all of his steam money. And he's like, ha ha, you want Half-Life, fuck you. So like, I'm just like, cause like, how do you top Half-Life 2? I get it, but you have so much money. You it's have a so much. Stolen you know? Well, I mean like they have, like Steam is made, it's a fortune and like they- They're not in the game development business anymore. They're in the game- uh, Their website games business. they are. Yeah, but Half-Life was so popular and I know that people were worried about Half-Life 2. And then when Half Life Two came out, they're like, "Oh my God!" Now we have to have three. So it's like, mm -hmm. I feel like that. Like I don't know. They went from having like Half Life was a very good game, and then Two was a great follow-up. Lit off. Of it, yeah. 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 So I don't know. Such is life. Maybe yeah. we'll see Half Life Three Eighty Three. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Along with Chrono Break and Mother Four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway. And skate Four. And yeah. Skate Four. And yeah. a parallel yeah. universe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, anyway, so, um, alright, so number seven, I guess it'd be Resident Evil 2, which is one of my favorite series of all time, and this, I love the second one, I really, like, it was a hard decision between re the remake and Resident Evil 4, uh, but, like, the second one, I think, just, like, really beefed up the original's concept and just took it to another level, so... It was like what Aliens was that Aliens. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and like, but like, again, that franchise, like, kind of like, like, you know, there's another franchise I like a little bit more that's coming up. Uh, that, like, but really I owe it to Resident Evil for laying the groundwork for really the tank control, pre-rendered background, uh, survival horror game. Gonna give an obligatory throw out to Alone in the Dark. Oh, yeah, right that too. The, the, <laughs> there are a lot the of fans then. out there, they're yeah. like, but wait! Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Resident Evil certainly popularized it and brought it, you know, into the mainstream a lot more. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, but like, man, it was just, like, it, it, another cool thing about Resident Evil 2 is that there were four storylines, because there were two discs, and you, there was Leon and Claire, and you could do Leon first and then Claire second, or you could start with Claire first and do Leon second, which I thought was the better recipe. So really, you've got four different experiences. And the only way to get the true ending was to do all four, so... But they were all unique. Like, granted, it was, like, the same path for most of it, but... A few things would be different. A few things would be different, and it would, like, answer questions that were asked earlier. So, there you go, Resident Evil. Love ya. Love ya.
All right. Now this is like where it gets a little like controversial because I feel like all these games could be my number one. So, but with that said, number six. Uh, well, I don't even know why it's this high, but Chrono Trigger. Uh, like just, what can you say? It's a classic. Probably one of the iconic RPG gems. You know, so I, I know that Nick's think, a big uh, fan. It's the best, like, single installment RPG out of the major, you know, non-major series. I know oh, it's, it's oh. part of a series of Chrono Cross. Yeah, like, I mean, like, well, yeah, I, I even like Chrono Cross. I thought it was a good sequel. I think Chrono Cross is great, but it's... Yeah. I, they're so polarized. They're, they're so, so different. So different. I, I'm yeah. not even really inclined to kind of lump them together mm-hmm. in a single series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Chrono Trigger, for me, is like RPG royalty. Yeah. It's one of the best RPGs ever made. You've got the you know development dream team for sure. Uh, that's the thing. It's like uh, Yuji Horr from the Dragon Quest series, and then you've got Sakaguchi, Sakaguchi and Katase, who, and then you've got yeah. um, Akira Toriyama doing the, the character design and the artwork, and you have Mitsuda doing. The I, music. I think they called it the Dream Project, actually. I think they did. Well, they, yeah, I think yeah. they did refer to them as the Dream Team. Yeah, yeah. Dream like Project. I mean, like it was just. They knew how special it was. All the um, world class, like you know, it was the last Square RPG to come out for. The Super Nintendo was that or Mario RPG? I can't remember. Um, and it just like led a huge boom. So like my first RPG was Final Fantasy VII, but the first game I played after that was Chrono Trigger, and like I think that just like further solidified F- Square as being such a you know part of my existence. And it's so yeah well, yeah yeah, it's yeah so well paced. Yeah. Like, oh, like and, and also the variety of it game. and the it's different paths you can take. That like it was like one of the best new game pluses ever. We could very go back replayable. through. Very replayable. You could like easily miss out on big stuff. Mm-hmm. Like and like you could go fight Lavos, the final boss, like, you know, five hours into the game or, or five you, minutes into five the game. Five five minutes of the game or or well or at 30, 40 hours in. You know, right. like you can you can kinda go, but you know, if you go and fight him, you're probably gonna die. And like but it's cool because you get an ending that way. You just have the whole world explode. One of the most yeah, yeah, yeah. linear 16-bit RPGs. I For think. sure. So, like, yeah, it was, like, taking... It was kind of the first Enix Square, like, let's Mash team up, up game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah collaboration. So, because yeah, it was, like, Dragon Quest meets, you know, Final Fantasy. And, like, and it was also cool because no random battles. Like, it was all... Mm-hmm. I think that was an innovative moment for RPGs mm-hmm. because you never had random battles. There, Some would be scripted. But then others would, like, you know, pop out of nowhere. So, um, yeah, like, but just, like, I remember playing it on the emulator on my computer because, like, I, I remember, like, even back then it was really expensive to buy on SNES. Um, and, like, I think it's the best Super Nintendo game, in my <laughs> humble opinion. So It's up there. Yeah, yeah. So from, from my, you know, from my perspective, my taste. All right. So here's another one, and I know that Harrison's gonna scoff. This is oh number five. God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is Ocarina of Time. And the whole Zelda franchise. At least you made top five. Yeah, yeah, at least you made the top five. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Ocarina of Time is my favorite. I've played almost every main installment, except for Majora's Mask, which a lot of people want to slap me over. Um, yeah, but I also love A Link to the Past, and I really like Twilight Princess, so those would be my top three. Uh, like, I mean, like, it's my favorite Nintendo franchise. I think that they've handled it extremely well. Um, like, I, I felt like the series was, like, you know, Ocarina of Time hit, and they're like, all right, here's our formula for two decades. And, like, so they, you know, vary, variated around that. And, like, you know, they would take risks here and there. And, like, you know, Breath of the Wild, I feel like, was the biggest step out of the com- comfort zone for the franchise. And it was obviously a hit. Uh, but, like, but Ocarina of Time to me, I just love how you can, like... F- uh, there were two different universes. I loved how the scale of it for its time, like, the combat was great. The th- like, the 3D effects and environments were landmark. The collecting? The, yeah, the collecting. <laughs> I actually did not get all the golden skull colors. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I did, but I did the trick, like the glitch. Oh, uh, you did the like, glitch. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I did. We're not true believers. I here, did so. run the bigger on sword across sword across was, the map. I, I did do that. Thing, yeah. I did that do was, that. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but like, just like the pacing of it, the dungeons, and um, 
for like the length for it at its time like it, it's like how could you do Zelda better after you know taking a 3D from Link to the Past um, but yeah like you know I just feel like it was like just one of those other landmark games and I'm not just saying that because it was like this phenomenon but it genuinely is one of my favorite games of all time so good yeah good yeah 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 all right all right I passed the test all right number four dun 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 you can't see I can't see oh, okay I mean if I really look so oh okay. now I can see oh you can see and that would be all right like again like skate three yeah yeah what? Xenogears my favorite RPG outside of the Final Fantasy series so uh but like you know Chrono Trigger is obviously right behind it but like for I don't know if I no one had ever played video games before and you know they're really into literature and you know narrative and big themes like I don't think you can do better than Xenogears uh, the story was very adult at a time when games were still considered for kids. Um, and just the ambition of it, of uh, like, just, you can tell that it was just such a passion project and like, unfortunately you can tell it was rushed at the end. But with that said, like when the remake eventually comes out, we can see the whole finished product. Uh, anyway, so like, it's got one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Like, I love Mitsuda's music in that. I still listen to the Xeno Gears music. I annoyed my friends with the concert. <laughs> He's not lying. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, and I, and I, I got the <laughs> Xeno Gears remastered Blu-ray, and I'm sure I'll force them to watch that later. <laughs> uh, but, like, you know, it's cool because it had, like, two battle systems. Um, it was a linear RPG for the most part, but... Like, I just felt like the narrative was so engaging and they kept mixing it up and paced very well uh, that it, you know, it, it, it really, like, held its luster. Um, you know, it's, it's as epic as it gets. It's, like, it's the most, like, kill God Evangelion. I guess that's kind of a, a analogy. Yeah, uh, I kind of, I went through, like, Evangelion and Xenogears kind of at the same time right. in my life. Yeah. So it felt like a lot yeah. of cross-pollination and themes there, but yeah, like, it, I, it's I, very ambitious. I first learned of, like, Nietzsche and, like, just all these philosophers that, you know, he took ideas from through right. Xenogears. Takahashi loves him some Nietzsche. Yeah, yeah, and, like, you know, and he, like, it was all over the place, so... Uh, like, like for me to learn Judeo-Christian that Judeo-Christian imagery, yeah. like European philosophy, for sure. Like, but like also, there's a lot of stuff in there. You know, corruption and power, corruption and religion, but also like these mythical, you know, themes of like reincarnation, which is kind of Christianity, I guess Hinduism. Maybe. Uh, so uh, Buddhism, Buddhism, one of those. We're smart. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but, like, I, I just remember that game as being such an experience, and it came off the heels of Final Fantasy VII for me, and I was just, like, thirsty for, like, the next Square game. And that was the next big RPG that came out, that and Final Fantasy Tactics. And, like, I was, like, just blown away by it. Like, the, the storytelling, and I'm glad it's become a franchise. Shout out to Xenosaga 1 and Xenoblade 1. I love those two games as well. So, um, yeah. Come on, remake, please. <laughs> So I guess I should play it. Yeah, you should probably play it. Like I think you've played almost every game on this list except for that. pretty much. I mean, yeah, and you've played the a lot of the Blade games. We'll do yeah. them. Well, but yeah, no, I it's I I know that I've I've seen videos that you've shown me and I've seen pretty much the entire intro to the game and uh, you know it was like the first time I watched it I was just like wow I can't believe I I didn't even know about this game because again I didn't have a PlayStation so, like when I was growing up so it was like one of those things that I miss and. It looked um, like I would have been so into it. I feel like if I had a PlayStation. Yeah, yeah it's like a twelve-year-old, thirteen-year-old me. It was like, oh man, this yeah. is so deep. And this yeah, is so yeah, crazy. exactly. And like, and apparently, it still carries weight in that respect. I, I haven't replayed it in a while, um, but it's like, it's for yeah. I remember being a kid and being like, <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, what yeah, they yeah. meant there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, like you know, it's like you're reading your La La Lamb Chop book. I'm playing Xeno Gears. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely near the top of like my you know want to go back and play from the PlayStation era. Oh, for it's sure. Xeno Gears is dense and yeah. it's long. And it's, it, it's, in some parts, it's kind of a slog, but it is one of the most ambitious RPGs I think I can yeah. think of. <sighs> what a great, what a great game. So anyway, let's move on to the top three. Dun dun dun. 
Now, three and two could be in a very interchangeable for me. Um, like, I think about it, and I'm like, God, the first three games of these two franchises are masterful. And so, number three is Metal Gear Solid 3 in particular. But I love one and two. Snake Eater. What a good game. And, like, what a great story, and what a great, like, everything. Like, I feel like that was Kojima firing on all cylinders. And, like, I don't know how much he can do better. Like, like he, like, that... He, he, no wonder it made him a household name with the first one. But, like, you know, the second one was so meta and just how topical it is with, like, you know, current state of affairs when it comes to, like, surveillance, like, intergovernmental conspiracy and uh, corrupt presidential leadership. Um, <laughs> yeah, too, was actually, yeah, yeah. like, in retrospect, surprisingly prescient. Like, for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I forecast it a lot. Yeah, 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 no kidding. Like, could you even maybe from the future, I don't know. Yeah, but, but I hope you agreed three so, I would from say, beginning yeah, I would definitely agree. Solid yeah. three is, like, Kojima, I think, firing on all cylinders. It's him yeah. at his most uh, capable and refined... And three, solid three is kind of Kojima at his like James Bondiness. Oh, for sure. It's yeah, got, it's, so it's got as much, you know, as much as it is a solid, tightly told, in you know, playable game. It's also like super campy, but in all the right ways. Like it hits all the right kind of notes. Yeah. And it's just start to finish. It's great. I mean, there's some you know systems in there that I think we people out there. like the. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what they called it, but like having to eat food all the animals and all that. Yeah. yeah. Some people um, saw it as time wasters, but like for the time, like I thought it was just like atmosphere. very immersive. Yeah, you know, yeah, the immersion, yeah, immersive, yeah. you were surviving and all that. And I forced Harrison to play this game too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Forced you to play a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he ends up loving it. Well, well I, I bought it when I was younger and I played through part of it. And then I think I wasn't doing well in school, so my uh, system was taken uh, away from uh, me. Bad and then I forgot about it, and which, how did I forget about it? Uh, but it was like, but when I played it, it was like, it was definitely a Thomas game because it's super story heavy, and I and I liked and I liked the story, but I also liked the enemies, and I thought like how things get surreal in Metal Gear games mm -hmm. is awesome, mm -hmm. and how they play little tricks on you. Like I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Like because it would you say, it would make it look, it it look like yeah. the TV screen went off or something. Yeah. Would say video instead of video. But Best boss fights of all time. The boss. The end, the end was good. Like I thought, and like you could like Bizarre not play. You could like like get frustrated on the end, and then not play the game for a week, and you come back, and you'd be dead. So that like, was really all, cool. Yeah, that, that was, was cool. cool. They had like like all the little touches, and like like in three, you would have you would could sleep in the bed in the prison, and you could wake up and some like. Tenchu kind of like ninja. Oh, there's a weird dream, dream like nightmare. Weird, like, it was like, yeah, game. fever dream action game yeah, you could play there's some cool stuff for there. a minute. And or like, if you kill a certain, so this is chronologically not, it is one of the older games of the timeline. Yeah. If you kill a certain character in three, it auto games over because you created a time paradox. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Like, yeah, the, yeah. yeah, the weird sort of Kojima isms are, you know, They're fun. and, and just, full flourish yeah. in that game. Like having to put a different controller into a different slot, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, and yeah. Like, and then change, yeah, yeah, yeah. And changing it in, like, the, in the uh, HUD or the, uh, yeah, Where know, he's the reading your memory system. card. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, but it's like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I love that. Or PS4, you had to actually change the controller with your controller, like, through a main yeah, screen yeah. Uh -huh. instead of having to unplug one into another port. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. It's a very creative game. Man, Mill Your Solid, like what a legendary yeah. franchise. Kojima, solid. They have that new game. Oh, Zombies? So, Rob, well, that's not a good that, That's going to be... Death Stranding. Like, how about Death Stranding? Will be the next closest no, no. thing we get. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how many Metal copies of Survival did Survive did you buy? Ugh. That is just, like... I mean, it's kind of sad. Like, Konami has just let, let these was, let these get a shit. Yeah. But oh well. But anyway. um, love that Shagahai chase scene on the motorcycle. One of the best moments in video game history. Uh, anyway, so number two. So, number two... Which is one of another, like, games that I would be, you know, I feel like that wouldn't be super stigmatized if you showed it some, to somebody who does not play video games, which is Silent Hill 2. So, um, and just the Silent Hill franchise in general. I love the first one. I love the third one. Um, the movie seen better too. days. Yeah, the original. Like, I honestly think that's the, the best video game movie. Yeah, yeah that movie, like, no, yeah, as far as video games, really the second like, movie is so, so, God. But this, the first one, I think was we saw the second one. one. Yeah, so, uh, 
Jon uh, Snow is just doing the best he can. Yeah, yeah, yeah with his accent. His accent is back and forth. Back and forth yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, so let's get back to the good My stuff. My bad. I love how you did not. He's not played Silent Hill, so he thinks of the movies, but the, like the first three games are phenomenal. Anyway, uh, so. Like, it's just, like, I think it's as good as storytelling gets in video games. Like, the second one had this really interesting story. You know, the protagonist gets a letter from his dead wife, and he's, you know, lured to Silent Hill, and he's just tortured the whole way through it. So, you were spoiling the end of the game. Oh, yeah, so basically, you know, you find out that James had... He was the one who killed his wife. And that this whole time, Silent Hill is creating these vignettes and fixtures for him to constantly experience killing his wife over and over and over and over again. He encounters other characters who are tortured as well by the town through their demons and like what they're trying to fix in themselves. Uh, which is kind of different from the original because the first game it's like it's a cult that created this world essentially. And the second one it's like the town itself is like a sentient being and like can and you know just basically you know wants to punish those who deserve punishment so um and like just like the journey of it is like really compelling and like you know he meets this uh you know female character named maria who looks a lot like mary except she's you know very you know sleazily dressed like she's you know she's a dancer at a nightclub and he like witnesses her murdered so many times and like it's just I don't know I don't think the story gets much better and I, like, feel, I feel like Silent Hill 2 is an experience you know and like you said the first game is a lot more sort of straightforward horror game it, it, Silent Hill is a physical place someone finds themselves there and they have to navigate their way out and you know kind of complete you know a fairly straightforward task which is fine their, their missing daughter right whereas with 2 the town is sort of presented is this amalgus shape-shifting purgatory which reflects the person who's experiencing it. You know, you have multiple characters going through this game together and they all seem to be seeing a slightly different version mm -hmm. of the town that they're in. Um, and it's the subtlety and sort of the increasingly frayed nerves that the game gives you that I think is why it's so effective and why it works so well. There's a lot of really subtle touches in that game's like level design, like the sound and visual design are impactful. There, there's sometimes like, so you know, there, there are horror movies that like draw attention to scares, and there are horror movies that put something in the background yeah. for you to notice and freak out about without drawing any attention to it. And Silent Hill is definitely the latter. Like the audio design and just the fear of the unknown is mm -hmm. done so well. Of uh, like, I think that you there's not never been a better horror game made. In Silent Hill 2 oh, okay. um, and like and really Silent Hill 1 and 3 are like kind of right behind it mm -hmm. so um, yeah like it's just like again it would be a game that I would be happy to show somebody you know if you're hanging out want to crack a six pack of beer play some Silent Hill 2 let's do it you know mm -hmm. so uh, but like just like it doesn't get too much better like the king of horror and just that kind of game design philosophy. Konami, get your shit together. Unfortunately, Team Silent kind of scattered through the four winds, and mm -hmm. they, you know, they, I don't. I think some people are not even in development anymore. Some people went to work for their studios, yada yada yada. But from what I read, from like the development, you know, behind the scenes, diaries, whatever, like Team Silent kind of had to run. You know, they they were running the asylum for games one and two, three. The studio kind of stepped in a little bit more. But then after that, like, they, yeah, were, they yeah. were heavily micromanaged, and they never, I think, really recaptured the magic that they had. Yeah, and, like, the team dispersed. Like, teams. 4 was actually directed by the sound director, Akira. Yeah, yeah, and give, yeah, yeah. Give, give Yamoka some yeah. love, because he's a big part of why the it's series successful. is so well. Yeah, yeah. It's because of that incredibly effective, like, industrial, this like, nine-inch nails, <laughs> But in hell, kind of. And they make like they just make your skin dominance. crawl. No, but like the sound just like is just so important yeah. in that game. And there are, there are parts of the game where it sort of plays with your mind, like without going into too much detail. Like the scale is just what. Yeah, yeah, no, I just flicked the, the number game. one is revealed. The number one, like, yeah. the oh, yeah. 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 shut it down. No, no, I'm shut not trying down. to shut you no. down. I, I just flicked the paper and got a reaction on it. He can't speak because he's never played Silent Hill 2. Oh, anyway, or Silent Hill. Silent Hill 2 is great. Yeah, man, one of the best. One of the greatest. So, number two, oh dear, I love you. 
Uh, whatever. You know, what, yeah, you know, what, what, what is know. it? Shocker. Spoiler if you watch any other video I made. Skate? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Skate 3. Final Fantasy 7. And just the whole Final Fantasy, Fantasy franchise in general. I know it's a shocker. But, uh, and man, like, if there's any, been any media that's changed me, like, and just got me so emotionally invested, it would be Final Fantasy 7, Lord of the Rings to a degree. Uh, but like, like really, like I can, I go back to Final Fantasy Seven as being just a masterclass of the genre and being so influential, changed the landscape for gaming, made RPGs, you know, not just D and D people in the basement. Um, it proved in 1997 that story and narrative could be like a one of the driving forces of the experience. So. Like guys, I just think like like you just can't really be and like and I know I've mentioned these other RPGs beforehand like Chrono Trigger, Xenogears, Gears, but I still feel like Seven brings all. It's so well rounded. I feel like that it doesn't skip a beat on any of its elements. So, uh, and like just like I remember like just like hearing the music and it was the first time like where video game music was like impacting me in any way besides dun 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 ba dun ba. Like, so, you know, like, it, but instead you got, like, these very emotional layer motifs. It was very cinematic, uh, and I have probably given a lot of money to Nobu and Matsu since then. So, uh, anyways, like, you know, like, my favorite game director of all time, Yasunori, Yoshinori Kitase, uh, you know, he directed Chrono Trigger 6, 7, 8, 10, produced 13, working on 7 or He's, he's a baller. He's, he's, he's been involved for a long time. Um, and, you know, like, like what can you say? I know that we probably, like, really are treading old ground here, but, you can, like... You can like, watch other videos when we're talking about Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, it's there'll a, be more videos, too. It's such too. an amazing game. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. you can't, like, leave it out of a list, I feel like, because it made... I don't know. It was, like, for me, I didn't play when it originally came out, but it still was impactful, and I still, like, found myself very immersed in this game that was, like... You know, outdated graphically, but I thought I, that didn't make a difference really for me. I thought the story was awesome, and, like, the visuals were great, and I liked the audio too. So, I mean, and it's, I mean everything, everything. Like, everything in the battle system is great the material system, the pacing, the presentation, the CG cutscenes, the music, the sound design, all the games within the games. Uh, like, I think that that game does not skip a beat for a 30 hour experience. So, 30. It's like, it's it's longer, if you go from start to finish, like I think it's like 30, 35, at least in my three plays. But if you do it all, like, and the first time playing it's probably around 40, and if you do it all, it's like 50 or 60 hours. You're getting hours. a little choke low. Yeah, like yeah. Hours. Right, God. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, but like, you know, like it, it just... That game still makes me feel like a kid, and like when I hear the music, like I remember... It takes you back to that time. It takes right? me back, and like I just, like even as an adult, like I still you know, get get the heebie-jeebies about it, so, like, and, you know, if, if they show that remake trailer, like, don't film me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> ugly crying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tears of joy. So, uh, but, like, I gotta give shout-outs to, like, I love 10, I love 8, I love 9, I love 6. Those would probably be my top five. Well, we did a whole games. video on We did do that, yeah, our top five fans. Yeah. He snuck in his fifth favorite, I'm gonna say my fifth favorite is 6. Yeah, <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, like, what a legendary fan, like, like, and you know, I still feel like that the franchise has its staying power, and it will still go on for a long ass time, so, I'm happy about that, and that's big time thanks to Final Fantasy VII, so, Woo! right, is that good? That was good. Yeah? That was a lot I like Yeah, that. so, like, I mean, it's, it's listy, right? What do you think, though? Did you yeah. hate it? You I like RPGs, and I like horror games. You think Skate 3 should have been on the list? You like Skate 3? Stop stopping. I tried. Yeah, yeah. I tried to sneak it in. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. Hit that bell. You know? Dude, he's, you, you always know this. Ring the bell. Just saying, man. You know, you're, you get it, you get it down. Like, oh, what could I, what, where would I be without my anchors? <laughs> uh, yeah, lost. Okay. Alright, that's the list. Bye. See you next time.